Hello everybody. As you might have heard or seen, we released NF Core Tools 3.0 last week and it comes with a bunch of features and as usual with some template updates which might create some merge conflicts. And in this video I'll try to guide you through a bit. I'll start here by going to the demo pipeline and I'll show you um, how to fix these conflicts there. Mm, as you can see, this is the automatically generated PR with some conflicting files to the dev branch. I opened already a git pod for this. It's currently on this PR, but let's switch to origin dev. And then merge and the template changes. As you see, we get some merge conflicts here. Let's go through them one by one. For example, CI YAML, we have um, just a small one where current change, meaning in the dev uh, branch, we have this while we added a bit of nice or I like to show all the different options running and the run name we added some more variables to the name very easy change no idea why git doesn't just accept them but we can just accept the incoming changes good actually let's switch it up a bit let's go through that on the source view okay in the change log we have just a small change in date for and the formatting thing we can just accept how it is at the moment we're happy with it how it is so accept the current change well one thing i'll add it as a dev channel here so we can add the things correctly there good that is changed uh, and we can stage it Next one, modest JSON. These are always a bit tricky because this is like an automatically generated file. So they, if it's too complicated of a conflict here, um, our recommendation is to delete the whole file and manually install all modules again. This will just rebuild it how it was before. Or if it's like this, where basically we have an updated multi-QC um module in the template we can just copy the sha from the updated multi qc into our current branch and accept all the rest so then that's fine but as i said this is an automatically generated one so it's not more difficult to handle next up is the next full schema where we actually removed some parameters some standard parameters in the template all these max job things we don't need anymore so we just accept the incoming changes now there's some more ah yes we also updated the schema version so you might have seen the change here it's now the draft 2020 12 not uh, version 7 anymore and one thing there is we changed from definitions to dollar devs so what we do here is we double check which one we need to add this one i will accept both changes and then this one we have already so this one we don't need to add here we need to update it to dollar devs instead of definitions then we are fine here Next up is the config, where we just have a classical case of partial alignment changes, meaning that the equal signs should align nicely between all parameters. So here the template has it fixed, so we accept the incoming change. And here, as I said before, we removed the max CPU, max memory, max resources options in general. So there you can actually accept the template changes if all the other values are the same which are the same so we just accept the incoming changes here and 
we uh, I think good to go. No, one more thing here. The next flow version also changed the base version. So I'll just do like this and accept the current change because there we have the DOI and the right version. So accept that and now we are good. This one we already fixed. Multi QC config. Here I think we just changed the formatting. So I recommend to just uh, change the URLs because that's the only difference between the text content, the formatting we keep from the template. That's for sure a good reason why we have it like this now. If I update these two links, it's just two links. I can ex ah, I updated it in the wrong way. Sorry for that. It should be here and here. And then we can accept the incoming changes. Next up is the base config. Here, as I said, the check max function is not needed anymore. Just check if the values are still the same. Yes, they are fine. So we can just accept the incoming changes. And we fix this. In the output, there is usually uh, some changes because we add or remove things for the multi QC or fast QC one, which actually in the future will be a lot easier if you change the setting in the skip feature ones. See the blog post for details about that. If, for example, like here, actually we don't have fast Q in this pipeline. So we can add the skip feature for QC and the dot nf core YAML and future template updates will not always add these things. But back then we were still here where it was standard. So we still have it here, but we can remove it now and also remove these things and accept the changes. Good. So it's just sect TK and RTQC. And then we have here, oh, okay, that's interesting. So we have changes in the NF core modules where we basically we updated multi QC, but Git doesn't recognize that correctly. So these four actually we can just say we accept the incoming changes because in the template we have the updated version and these are any anyway NF core modules, so we wouldn't uh, touch them anyway. So that's that, and with that we can merge. But let's not merge into dev. Let's create a new branch called manual update. Let's commit. Of course, there was prettier. Complaining. So let's run pre commit. All files. Now it should be good. Ah, sorry. I oh, got confused by this interface. So yes, we have an empty line which we need to stage and now we can commit and everything is should be happy. We can publish the branch and open PR. If this changes. Yes, and then create and we have it. Great. That's it. Uh, these are the changes. And if we merge this, we, the automated PR should close by itself, or we can just close it because uh, no more changes would be needed. I hope that clarified some of the weird merge conflicts you can have with the new template update. And have fun. And uh, yeah, if you need some help, shout on the 
tools uh, channel or ping the infrastructure team and we'll gladly help you out. Bye.